up, YouTube? This is your boy, John, from the Jersey Shore, and I'm back with you today to talk about Joe Dante's 1981 classic werewolf movie, The Howling. <laughs> If you're already a subscriber to my channel, welcome back. It's good to see you again. If you're not already subscribed to my channel, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and smash that subscribe button. The Howling stars Dee Wallace, Christopher Stone, and Dennis Dugan. So this movie starts off with reporters and cops trying to catch a serial killer. The, they have a reporter in a phone booth trying to make contact with a serial killer while they are recording the, uh, the conversation to see if they can track his location. They lose contact with the reporter, which is Dee Wallace's character, by the way. Um, and she winds up in some porno room at an old uh, video store in the city. Oh, she goes into this back room of this CD video joint. She puts a, a coin in a slot. She starts watching some X-rated movie. And a voice behind her begins to speak with her. The voice behind her is the serial killer that everybody's looking for. She slowly turns around. She's trying to see him. And he moves closer to her, and she you just see a look of horror on D. Wallace's face, and then it cuts away. You don't see anything else happen for a few minutes. The uh the police find out her location. They go down to this video store. Well, actually, they go to the video store looking for her, and they begin questioning the guy at the front desk. He says, Yes, yeah, somebody who fits that description is in the back room. They start approaching the back room, they hear screams, gun starts going off, you see blood splatter on the floor. You see blood under the door with broken glass, and that's the end of this scene. So now Dee Wallace's character has been traumatized. She goes to see a shrink. The shrink sends her off to some mountain resort to go up there with some tree huggers and some hippies. And while she's up there, she notices that everybody around her is acting strange. She is having uh, terrible nightmares. She's hearing things out in the woods. She basically seems like she's going a little bit nuts because of the, uh, the events that took place towards the beginning of this movie. So eventually out at this resort, she suspects that her husband has been cheating on her. She just, a lot of more weird stuff has been going on around her. He seems to be closing her off. Um, people are showing, are winding up dead. It's, it's just, it seems like madness going around here in this hippie community. And she doesn't know what in the world's going on, but she's already all freaked out before she even gets there. And eventually her doctor shows up at this place. And as it turns out, her doctor sent her to this resort because it's full of werewolves, and her doctor is also a werewolf. So anybody who has been bitten or scratched or attacked who has not been torn to shreds is now becoming a werewolf. One of D. Wallace's buddies has been doing a whole lot of reading. He finds out that you can kill werewolves with silver bullets. He goes to this store. For whatever reason, this dude's got a box of silver bullets available. He throws some money on the counter, walks out of the place with silver bullets, Goes to the resort where Dee Wallace and her husband are. He's got a shotgun on him. It's loaded with silver bullets. And he starts picking off werewolves. The werewolves that he didn't shoot wind up locked inside of a shed. They set the shed on fire. Dee Wallace and him jump in a car. They start get busting ass to get out of there. And while they're driving away, they come across another guy standing in the road with a shotgun who is slowly turning into a werewolf. You see his fangs. They take him out. But while they're taking him out, their car gets uh, damaged from that guy shooting bullets into their car. They get out of their car. They get into the cop car. For whatever reason, the cop car doesn't start. The cop car is now surrounded with, zomb with uh, not zombies, werewolves. They get the car started. They make a break for it. While they're in the process, a werewolf gets on the car. A werewolf gets in the car. A werewolf bites D. Wallace in the shoulder. So now her character is infected. Everybody has been infected in this movie now to this point, except for the guy who showed up there with the silver bullets. He works for a, tele a radio station. Like I said, she's a reporter. She's on the evening news. She chooses to do what she can to subdue the desire and need to transform into a werewolf until she is live on the air. She goes on the news, she's live on the air, and she slowly turns into a werewolf. So now after she turns into a werewolf, her buddy has no choice but to take her out as well. He, for whatever reason, has a loaded shotgun in a newsroom. He takes her out, he kills her, and that's the end of the show. Show's over, movie's over. 
The Howling was made in 1981, it was, which is unfortunately for this movie, it was the same year that American Werewolf in London was made. The, uh, the transformation in American Werewolf in London is absolutely legendary, which uh, it was uh, Rick Baker's work. In this movie, the uh, werewolf transformations that take place are also pretty cool, but you know, like I said, unfortunately, it all came out the same year that American Werewolf in London did. So although very cool, lacking compared to what American Werewolf in London did. The movie overall as a whole, it spawned, I believe, five sequels. I believe there were uh, a total, actually four sequels. I think there's a total of five movies. That wasn't done for a mis by mistake. This movie, you know, I consider this movie to be pretty legendary. This was the, uh, the, create, the beginning of the werewolf movie craze. I don't think there's any way to deny that. When you have uh, up until 1981, there were a few werewolf movies made. But none of them were nearly as good as these two movies were, meaning American Werewolf in London and The Howling. Um, so I think that that is definitely the year of the werewolf. It's got to be 1981. The, the two greatest werewolf movies of all time were made in 1981. So American Werewolf in London is my personal favorite. It's in my top ten favorite movies of all time. But another really good werewolf movie that I can tell you about, other you know, there, you have the whole Underworld series, which was werewolves and vampires. Um, but you also have... Dog Soldiers was a fantastic werewolf movie. Maybe one of these days I'll do a review of that as well. But, you know, that's one of my personal favorites. But these two, like I said, 1981 had to be, it's got to be considered the year of the werewolf, right? And although Dee Wallace has been in several uh, pretty big time movies, she was in E.T., she was obviously in The Howling, uh, she was in Cujo, she's been in, in a lot of the Rob Zombie movies as of late in recent years. I would say that if not Cujo or E.T., that this was probably the greatest, and I'll be totally honest with you, I think that this was probably Dee Wallace's greatest role. It's between this and Cujo. She, you know, she she's the centerpiece of the film. She carries it out flawlessly. Her acting is very convincing. She's great at putting her emotions on film, and I just think overall, it's a great product. She Dee Wallace deserves everything that she got, the fame and the notoriety for, for this role. So yeah, man, The Howling, 1981. If you haven't already seen this movie, I know I've ruined it for you, but you should really check it out. If you're really a, a, a sincere, die-hard horror movie fan that has not seen this movie, absolutely check it out. If you're somebody who has already seen this movie, and I'm assuming that a lot of you horror movie fans out there already have, then you know what I'm talking about. You can't go wrong with The Howling. All right, folks, that's going to do it for my video. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. If you really enjoyed the video, please subscribe to my channel. I would love for you to go on this journey with me. Take care of yourself. Take care of each other. Have a kick-ass day. And thank you for watching.